Hello, this is Maraj Patel, and today we're going to be continuing Unit 12, which is all about solutions, and today we're going to specifically be talking about solution stoichiometry. So we've already learned about stoichiometry, which is learning how to, uh, taking measurements in chemical reactions, and now we're going to be applying it with solutions. And so we're going to go, go over what we know and what we're going to add to solution stoichiometry. And so, we've already learned what a mole is. And so, a mole is in 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of in a substance. It can be any substance. And we've learned how to uh, change it to grams and back and forth using what we call molar mass, which is how many grams are in one mole of in a particular substance. And so now that we've learned molarity, we can convert from moles of a substance to liters of a solution, depending on how concentrated it is, if we have molarity. And we can use it to go back and forth. And, uh, and so we've learned that for, you know, all sorts of substances. And so, um, we, again, we, you know, we use moles to grams using molar mass and moles to liters using molarity and now and we've learned in chemical reactions we can compare moles of A or substance A here to any other substance in the same chemical reaction equation if we use a mole to mole ratio which compares the two coefficients or moles of two different substances in a chemical reaction so that's what we've learned and so far, we've learned without solutions, we've learned that you can convert from grams to moles and use a mole to mole ratio to get to moles of B. And then we can, um, and uh, from moles of B, we can get to grams of B. And so now we've added molarity, which now we can talk about liters of A and convert to moles and then from moles we can go to moles of B and then from there we can go to liters of B or we can stay at moles or go to grams so this is the only part we're adding is molarity so now we have liters in our uh, equations and calculations and so we're, there's going to be four types of problems and so here's a chemical equation so ammonia and phosphoric acid solutions are used to produce ammonium hydrogen phosphate fertilizer so what volume of 14.8 molar uh, ammonia is needed to react with 120 liters of 12.9 molar of H3PO4 and so first we have to figure out what we have and what we need so we need volume of the substance B so on the side we can write that we need liters of NH3 or ammonia and we have the molarity of B so we can write that so we have molarity of B and we have a uh, volume of A so liters and we have a uh, molarity of A and so if you want to go back to this map let's just go back to this map we start out with liters of A and we need to go to uh, liters of B so we're going to be first converting from liters to moles using molarity of A and then we're going to use mole to mole ratio to compare moles of A to moles of B and then we're going to convert from moles of B to liters of B using molarity so that these are the three steps we have to take so if you ever want to stop and think about what we're going to do you can always just come back to the slide and or draw this on a piece of paper and follow along as we convert and so we're just simply using this as like a guide as what conversions we need to do and so um, so first we have to find what we have and what we need so we need volume of B and we have molarity of B and we have molarity of A and volume of A so first step is we have to write down what we have so we're going to start with liters of A right here and uh, from liters of A what do we use to convert to moles of A and if you remember 
uh, or if you ever see leaders and we're going to mold, we always use molarity. So, so once you see leaders, you should always have like a little flash in your head. They're going to, uh, you're going to use molarity. So we have leaders on the top. So what will go on the bottom of this fraction is leaders. So leaders of H3PO4 is on the bottom. And then moles will be on the top because we're going to cancel out leaders and go to moles of H3PO4. And when we ever have molarity, always remember there's one liter and we get the number of moles from the molarity. So we have H3PO4 right here. So we're going to have 12 moles per liter. So that's where the molar, uh, moles comes in from this molarity here. So that's what we did here. So now that we cancel out liters, we're in moles of A, so check right there, we did our first step. Now we need to go from moles of A to moles of B, and what do we use is a mole to mole ratio from moles of A to moles of B. So we set up another fraction, and because we have moles of A or H3PO4 on the top, right, moles of H3PO4 on the bottom, because we need this to cancel out, so it follows the same rule, whatever's on the top of the first fraction, goes on the bottom of the next fraction. That'll always stay true. Then moles of B goes on the top, so we need ammonia, so we have moles of ammonia at the top, or, yeah. And, uh, so we get these from where? Where do we get these numbers here? And we get this from the chemical equation. So, we look at H3PO4, which is right here. We, there's a, an invisible one here. And then, we get moles of NH3 from here, and there's a 2 out here, so we write a 1 here, and 2 there, respectfully, respectively, sorry. And then, so now that we're in moles of ammonia, we need to convert to liters of ammonia, and so whenever converting from moles to liters, or liters to moles, always think molarity. Molarity is your friend. So, molarity is compares moles to liters, so... We have mole here, so we're going to need mole on the bottom when we're converting. And what goes on the top is liters. And what's the magic number for liters when we're talking molarity? It is always 1. So write 1 with liter. And then we get this number here from the molarity. And it's NH3, so molarity of NH3, which is what we have, is right here. And so... Always remember when you're uh, doing these problems and taking molarity and extracting it from the problems, always set your numbers to the sides and make sure you use the right numbers. So we could have gotten the two molarities confused and thrown off the whole problem. So always remember to keep uh, track of which number goes with which substance. And that's why we write wrote the substances out here to make sure that they match. And so after we do this, we have the whole conversion set up. So we multiply all the numerators, or all the top parts, and then divide by the product of the denominators. And so if we do that, we would get 209 liters of NH3. So that's how many liters of NH3 we need to react with this many liters of H3PO4. So that's what we answered, essentially. And so now we have a second type of problem. So now we're going from liters of A, which we've started out, but now we're going to molarity of B. So we're going to find the molarity of B if we have liters of A. So we have 159 milliliter sample of KOH solution reacts completely with 100 milliliters of 1.5 molar H2SO4. So calculate the molarity of the KOH solution. So KOH in this case is going to be substance B and H2SO4 is going to be substance A. So um, so first we have to figure out what we need. So we need to calculate molarity. And uh, uh, molarity is going to be measured with just capital M. And it's always going to be moles over liters. And so we have the volume of B, which is given to us right here, of KOH. So KOH is B. So And we can convert this to liters just quickly like this, like in a snap, by moving the decimal places three places to the left. So we have volume of B and we need moles of B to figure out molarity. So that's what we're going to do. And we have 
uh, volume of A, which is 100 milliliters, convert to liters by moving the decimal place three places to the left. And so we got this. And now we have molarity of A. So right there, we just got from right here. And so now we're going to start with the liters and go to moles of B and then put moles of B over this liter amount and find molarity. And if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, I'll slow down and show you the whole step and as we, we can talk about it. So we have a uh, volume of A. So we want to go from liters to moles. Always go from liters to moles. And so, um, so we're going from liters to moles. And what do we use to convert from liters to moles? Is molarity. Molarity should go off in your head like a little light bulb. Because molarity compares liters to moles. So we have liters on the top. So where does liters go? On the bottom or top? And it's always the bottom. So if we have liters on the top, it goes on the bottom. If liters was on the bottom for some case, it would go on the top. And so liters is on the bottom. Moles is on the top. So where do we get these two numbers from? With liters, it's always 1. And moles, we get from the molarity right here. So it's 1.5 moles and 1 liter. And this is just molarity of A, which is right here given to us. So now that we're in moles of A, what do we do now? And so uh, the next step is we use a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, which we get from this equation here, and we convert to moles of B. So we have moles of A on the bottom, because moles of A is on the top, on the bottom, so they cancel out. And then so now we're, moles of B is on the top, so we write that. And so we get these two numbers from the coefficients of this equation. So H2SO4 is A, so there's a coefficient of 1 because there's an invisible 1 here. Then we have KOH, which is B right here. So we get 2 right here, and then put 2 in front of moles of KOH. And so 1 and 2 go there respectively. And so now that we're in moles of B, uh, we have that's what we need right now so we first multiply all the numerators divide by 1 which is just the same thing so we get 0.3 moles of KOH so that's how many moles we have that's good and all but we need molarity so does anyone know the formula for molarity and uh, the formula for molarity is moles over liters and so we have liters of B right here and we got moles, so we got to put these two together. So divide 0.3 by 0.159. So if you do that in your handy dandy calculator, just like that, we would get the molarity. And you would find that it will be 1.89 molar of KOH. That's how concentrated this solution is. And so now we have a third type of problem, which is from grams of A to liters of B. So now instead of starting with liters, we're going to start with grams. And so here's the problem. Solid aluminum is added to an aqueous solution of zinc chloride. What volume of 7.5 molar of ZnCl2 solution is needed to react completely with 54 grams of aluminum? So, uh, so we have to first extrapolate what we need and what we have so we have a uh, substance B here so we need volume so right on the side right away you can write that we need it in liters which is usually what we measure it in and so uh, we have the molarity of B so we can write that to the side too so this is we need volume of B and we have molarity of B and we have uh, 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 sorry, uh, mass of uh, mass of substance A, which is aluminum in this case. So now that we that now that's all said, we need to start out with what we have. So we have substance A here. So we're going to start with that and go to B. So we have 54 grams, and that's good. But how do we get to um, moles of A? Because we need to uh, compare the two moles in this formula to get to moles of B and then to liters. So we use the magic thing which is 
molar mass. So we use molar mass to convert from grams to moles of A. So molar mass, I remind you, is from the periodic table. I'm sure most of you need to cal know how to calculate it. So whenever you're doing molar mass, there's always one mole with X amount of grams, and the grams varies according to the substance. So in this case, it's aluminum. And by the way, we, we wanted grams to cancel out, so that's why grams is on the bottom. And so uh, grams will cancel out, and we're just left with moles. So one mole goes on the top, because always when we're doing molar mass, there's always one mole and something amount of grams. And so grams will cancel out. So now we're left in moles of aluminum. So yippee, we finished one step. Now we need to go to moles of aluminum to substance B. So we use a what to convert from moles of A to moles of B. We use a mole to mole ratio. And um, the mole to mole ratio is calculated from where? Is it from the periodic table? From the equation? Or is it just like we just spontaneously bring it out of like thin air? And so if you said equation, you are correct. And so we get it from the coefficients in this, in this equation here. And so we have aluminum, which is substance A, and we need to get to zinc chloride here, so right here. So uh, whatever's on the top of this first fraction goes on the bottom, so moles of aluminum is on the bottom, and then moles of zinc is on the top because that's substance B, and that's what we need to end in. And so this will cancel out. And so moles of aluminum and moles of zinc are from the coefficients respectively, so there's two moles of aluminum right here, and then three moles of zinc chloride. So I write that down, and so moles of aluminum again will cancel out when we're left in moles of zinc. So yippee, now we're almost there. So now we need to get from moles of zinc to liters of zinc. So how do we do that? So remember, when we're going from moles to liters, uh, think of the thing that compares moles to liters, and we just learned about in the last video. And if you said molarity, you are correct. So molarity compares moles to liters. And so if we have three moles of zinc here, and we need to get to liters, we use molarity. So molarity is, remember, one liter, or X amount of moles with one liter. And so this time, mole is on the top. So we need moles on the bottom or top to cancel it out. And I'm sure most of you have known that moles goes on the bottom because if we need to cancel out, so we need to divide by moles to get to get get rid of it. And so with molarity, there's always how many liters? 100 liters, 1 liter, 10 liters, uh, 6 liters, and the magic number is 1. So whenever we're dealing with molarity, there's always 1 liter, and molarity is always given to you. And in this case, it's 7.5 per one liter. And so now that we're done calculating, so we're, we can always check because we need liters right here and we're in liters of zinc chloride and we need that. So this is all good. So we multiply all the numerators. So 54 times three divided by 26.98 times two times 7.5. And if you do that in your handy dandy calculator, you would get 0.4 liters of zinc chloride that you need to react with 54 grams of aluminum. And so now we have the last type of example, so I promise you this is the last example of solution stoichiometry you'll be hearing from me. So for all you guys that don't like stoichiometry, yippee, but you still got to know this for your test, so uh, just, you know, just pay attention. So leaders now we're going to go from liters of A to grams of B. So now we're going to be ending in grams. And so here's the scenario. So adding one, 102 milliliters of 0 0.508 molar of CuCl2 in an aqueous solution to an excess of AgNO3 forms a solid AgCl as a precipitate. What is the maximum mass of AgCl? precipitate. And so here we have a formula. 
And so now we need to extrapolate everything we have from this. So pull out all the numbers we know and what we need. So we need the mass of AGCL. So that's going to be measured in grams. So off to the side you can write this. Grams of AGCL. And we have um, the volume of A right here. And we also have uh, the molarity of A too. So um, we're going to start off with substance A and work our way to substance B. So here we have liters or you know liters of A so that's volume and we just converted milliliters to liters by moving the decimal place three places to the left and so uh, now we're in liters and so now we're gonna move to from liters to moles because uh, whenever we're doing these type of problems we always have to use moles in some way shape or form so whenever uh, whether it's using molar mass or molarity to convert to moles we just got to do it. So, so here we're using liters to moles. So what do we have to use? We have to use molarity in this case because we start with liters and go to moles. So liters goes on the bottom, of course, so it cancels out. And moles is left on the top. And so with molarity, there's always one liter. And where do we get the number of moles? and uh, we get this from the problem. It's molarity is always given to you and it always will be. So molarity is given to you when you're converting. So it's right here, 0 0.508. And uh, so we just multiply 1, 0.102 times 0 0.508. And after doing that, we get moles of CuCl2. So that's good, now we're in moles of A. Now we get to moles of B, and so how do we get from moles of A to moles of B? And uh, you should be all saying in your head, uh, mole to mole ratio, mole to mole ratio. And so uh, that is definitely correct. And so, um, so to compare moles to moles, where do we get these numbers from? And uh, it should be from the equation. So. Um, we should be getting them from the coefficients of these equations. So we look at what we have. So we have moles of CuCl. And uh, so we need to cancel out moles of CuCl. So we put that on the bottom. And then moles of B, which in this case is AgCl, goes on the top. And so uh, we get these two numbers from the coefficients. So CuCl is a 1 here, so 1 goes down here, and then we have AGCL, which is a 2 here, coefficient, so we write 2 over AGCL, and so now that we're in moles of AGCL, what do we use to convert from moles of AGCL to grams of AGCL? And hint that this is, we've already learned this, like, a, like maybe two weeks ago in like the stoichiometry unit, and uh, this, my friends, is molar mass. So we use molar mass to convert from moles to grams of substance. And we get this from the periodic table. This does not have to be given to us. And so uh, whatever's on the top, again, goes on the bottom. And it'll always be like this. I know you're probably tired of this, but this will help you. I am sure of it. And so, uh, so we have moles of AgCl on the bottom and then grams of AgCl goes on the top and we add up the two atomic masses of silver and chlorine and get this number and whatever whenever we do molar mass there's always one mole always one mole and always will be and then uh, 143.32 grams per one mole of AgCl and so now that uh, we can check that we're in grams of AgCl and that's what we need right here looks exactly the same and so uh, and we just multiply all the numerators. And because there's only ones in the denominators, you don't have to divide by one. So we just multiply all these numbers together. And if we do that, we would get 14.9 grams of AgCl. And so again, you know, notice how we use liters and we went to moles using molarity and moles of B to grams of B using molar mass. So that's always going to be there.
And so that is it for um, for solution stoichiometry. And I hope this helped you, you know, learn about calculating. And it's always hard to, you know, show math when you don't really have paper and pencil like out in front of you. So whenever you're doing these math problems, always go home and, uh, you know, practice these problems. You can't just like, you know, learn math without practicing unless you're like, like a prodigy in math. But still, but that that's no excuse to not practice it. So. Uh, try a few problems out and uh, f some few tips are um, make sure remember when you're ever using fractions to convert you always whatever is on the top of the first fraction you're multiplying by a second fraction whereas on the top goes on the bottom of the next one so they cancel out and whenever you're doing with dealing with molarity you're converting from liters to moles or moles to liters and so once you see moles and you need to get to liters or liters and you want to get to moles, always think of molarity. And molarity always has one liter per x amount of grams, and the x amount of grams are given in the equation. Then we have molar mass, and you probably know that same rule applies. Whatever's on the top goes on the bottom of the next one. If grams is on the top, grams will go on the bottom. If moles are on the top, moles goes on the bottom of the next fraction. And um, remember there's always one mole in x amount of grams. The x amount of grams is calculated from the periodic table. And then, um, remember this map. So if we have grams, we need to get to moles. And if we have liters, we need to get to moles. Always get to moles. And once you get to moles, you're home free. You can go from moles, you can go literally anywhere. You can go to moles of B. And then from moles of B, you can go to grams of B or liters of B. And remember, mole to mole ratios are from the coefficients in this equation here. So always remember, just use the corresponding coefficients. And so, I hope this helped you practice or learn about solution stoichiometry. And so remember just to practice those problems and just get good at converting because this is like the fundamentals of like converting in chemistry. And so um, the next video is going to be all about uh, solutions and equilibrium. And so we might also review the whole solutions unit because uh, equilibrium is pretty simple and so we'll get take a break from all this you know math and converting so take care and I hope you have a good day and I hope this really helped you